This is the final talk on the verge of Salmon stage this year, and closing the stage in what would be the headline act in Glastonbury as an equivalent, and, do, and doing the only talk that I can see actually relating to drones uh, this year, uh, Mike Kehoe from Amy Consulting. Thank you very much. Um, pardon the pun, I'm not going to drone on. Uh, this is the last session for today. Um, why drones? Uh, from an Amy perspective, it's a safe thing. And I mean a safe thing in a positive way. We want to remove people from harm from the side of the road network, from the rail network, wherever the case may be in terms of surveys, incident management. We want to do things differently. We've had too many people hurt in the past, or we've had people who have not been able to send to work the next day because of an injury caused by being on site. So what can we do differently with a drone? Well, hopefully you'll get a, a quick overview of this and some of the work we've done today. For those who are uninitiated to drones, they cause hassle. Um, for your work, live at home, no doubt you've been uh, seeing a drone go past your window or someone's flown it very close to your house. It's noisy, it's intrusive, and it can affect your privacy. That's a known fact. Does it require a pilot? Well, yes, in the true meaning of within line of sight, it does require a pilot. What about the skill criteria? Well, at the moment, there's no skill criteria to fly a drone. It's an interesting fact, unless you're in the military where you're operating a significantly sized drone, there will be an issue if you haven't got a license. You require paperwork from the CAA. Well, that's a definite. If you want to go and do an aerial survey of a location, whether that's uh, just for a, a, a wedding type event or potentially for a client like Highways England or a Kent, uh, Kent County Council, the case may be, we're doing a survey of a road network. So you will require some paperwork. And yes, they do fall out the sky. And sometimes we get air prox um, reports from the CAA saying a drone's come too close to an airplane. And that does happen. So regulation needs to be required. Do they fly for themselves? Not yet. Will do. Do they fly very far? Not really. What they will do in the future, no doubt, and we can see that the future of air taxis as that things move in the future, we'll have the use of uh, long-range drones. Do they think for themselves? No. Not at this moment in time, but again, as the, uh, technology develops, there's no reason why the autonomous drone will be the future operation. Know where people are? Well, the police use them for that exact fact. Sometimes they will use a drone to look for an individual who's lost or potentially for a crime in progress. Well, there we are with drones. Let's bring you up to speed what we've done so far. Or what could be the future for drones? This is a simulation model. It's from Heathrow. And what it's showing is a visualization of a flight path for a drone flying from Heathrow over a road network. Why simulation? Well, if we were to test it in the, in the real world environment, the first thing is Heathrow wouldn't allow us to do it. Secondly, other organizations will be a bit concerned with just going out and doing a be, beyond visual line of sight operation. So why not test it in the visual environment of a 3D world map, which you can see is quite vivid in its own entirety, perhaps there's no traffic on the road network at this moment in time. And the idea behind that is to understand what we need to do in terms of our flight planning where we go from A to B, and what is the safest mode without hitting anything or coming into contact with a potential object. Could be a bird, could be a plane, could be a crane, could be any type of uh, infrastructure on the road network for this instance. And as you can see, the detail is fairly, fairly good in terms of what we can see. So the proposition, drones for instant response or drones for last mile delivery. I think they're the two easiest things to do. If we go down the survey route, there's a lot of work for us as an organization or any organization involved with drones to do to operate beyond visual line of sight. Notably, uh, if you want to use it for instant response, you've got to know certain criteria about where you're flying to, where you're going from. Also, what's your hazards en route? And likewise, with last mile delivery, a similar set scenario would apply from to what am I carrying in this instance and what's my ob objective. So in some ways we've gone about this the wrong way. We need to think about what is our concept of operation. 
Now, the concept of operation would be something very simple. What do you want to use the drone for? Is it because you want to use it just to fly as a toy? It's the, it's the must-have toy or the must-have tool? The answer is no. You've got to understand it as a business what you want to use the drone for. And that could be something as simple as I want to monitor people on the side of the road because it's a health and safety issue when they work in a lone environment. So the solution, and at the bottom you can see something very clever. It's called Discover, Develop, Demonstrate and Deliver. This is from the Highways England aspect of how we actually build a concept of operation for the drone. And it does match what we consider the, the, the four Ds against our principles of, of using a drone. Understanding the operational requirements. What do you want to use that drone for? Feasibility study, basically your business case. Does it... Uh, all stack up. Is the cost of putting a drone in the air outweigh the cost of actually sending someone to site? Subsystem development, so all the navigational systems that are going to be deployed, the sensor capabilities, all needs to be compiled before you start developing your own drone. And then the airframe. The airframe can be anything from a small DGI type to a fixed wing long linear asset required drone which can go for various miles in, 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 in direction. You then need to test the integration of the systems, the sensors, everything on board the drone to make sure it works perfectly before you go to the operational deployment. So operational requirements for instance response, first of all safety of an incident, for, uh, fast response for command and control so giving high level overview for uh, the client or the emergency services, the survey of the incident, obviously understanding what's on the network before you even get there. That's a clear, clear help to you as an organization. Do you want it to operate day, night, or weather? Now, drones can't operate in all weather due to the sensor capabilities. Some drones can operate in rain, but majority can't, so that's a fact you've got to consider. Then the communication between the drone and the ground station. How is it going to be controlled? What level of detail do you require in terms of a layered system approach? The transit distance, Mass massively important to any organization. But as HE would find out, there must be want to put a key performance indicator saying, if you leave a certain place to travel to a certain distance to do an incident, we want to make sure you get there in a matter of minutes rather than having to send someone who's going to take an hour due to congestion issues. If the drone's going to take longer, the business case won't stack up. Reduce manning. In other words, by putting a, a drone in the sky, can I reduce the manning levels required to operate outside on the network? The answer is yes, but can you deploy them to other aspects of the, 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 the incident or do other things or do other tests which ordinarily you're now getting the drone to do? Most importantly, the specialist sensing. What type of sensor do you require to monitor the road network? whether it's for survey or incident response. Again, it, the cost can range from uh, £3,000 up to £40,000 a sensor, depending on your requirements. Last mile delivery, and obviously safety is important. We want to deliver a package or payload. What's the requirement of that package and payload? It could be a spanner to go to site, a simple spanner. But if we think about using our technology clever, couldn't we dynamically build a plastic tool rather than a metal tool that can go to site? Again, a fast response. There's no point having something that's slow, which is going to take an hour and a half to get there when it's a critical bit of infrastructure that's failed. Again, the day-night weather operation and a range of 50 kilometers. Do we want to operate to 50 kilometers? Well, mostly the answer is yes, but that's going beyond visual line of sight where the capability will start to affect your operation. And again, effectively, by having that payload uh, drop with the last mile, it means that we don't have to send someone in a car or a van to site. Bit of a technical summary. Um, the first one on the, on the map is giving you the route indication of going from A to B. So basically it's like a UTM, that's an urban traffic management service, and the reason, or an unmanned traffic management service, and that's something that might be a requirement going forward for any client. And the reason we're having that is so you understand where you're going from A to B and you don't hit another object or aircraft, that could be a drone, flying in a similar direction or pattern. You need to operate in airspace, and that's the, the diagram below. Majority of our airspace is Class G, but as you get towards the likes of Heathrow or airspaces around airports, we end up going into Class A airspace. So the restrictions become much tighter. 
So understanding the, the, the restrictions is part of the key process of your safety case. The last two di diagrams on the right-hand side just show you the difference between the platform operation of fixed-wing aircraft against a hybrid aircraft against a rotor aircraft. And it's fairly explanatory. Basically, if you've got a sweet spot of the hybrid drone, that's a mixture of a rotor drone and a fixed-wing drone. Obviously, you want to use a fixed-wing drone to do a long linear survey, but if you want something to survey on the spot, a fixed-wing drone would not be able to do that. That's why a hybrid drone would mostly suit that uh, application. If you want to use something that's just going to hover in one spot, then you're going to use a uh, rotocopter. And that will be something that will do a quick uh, view of the, the, uh, of the sensor or the, the application you're looking at, take the data and put it onto, the, onto you in, in a format, either an SD card or download to the site. So again, looking at the technical summary, as I've just mentioned, the three drones, various types available and all roughly have the same type of characteristics they fly. One will be up in the, up in the air for a short duration of time, which is the rotocopter. The fixed wing, long linear distance, goes over certain miles, and the hybrid, which can do both jobs at the same time. So what will it mean for Highways England? In the instant response to watch staff, I think that's really important. We all send staff out to sites, but at the end of the day, do we actually know what they're doing when they're dealing with an instant so it's like a top level cover exercise, but also the fact that we can actually join up our community, and that is the engagement with emergency services at the same time, allowing them to see the scene of an incident. So you start to build the picture really quickly. If you can do that, you can think about what type of systems or processes or equipment you need to bring to site very, very quickly. And the, the, the example I'll give you, say if it's a tanker that's gone over, it's a chemical tanker and it's got a Haschem plate, and it can't be read, would you want to send someone to site? It's, the drone is expendable. Send the drone to the site. Get the drone to see if it can read the plate. If you can read the plate, then you understand what you're dealing with. Reduction in time of the road closure. Once you understand what the picture is, you can make, make some simulations very quickly, how quickly you can open the road. And that, again, for any organization, is a, is a bonus. The, move, the quicker you can move the reduction in traffic or the traffic congestion moving, is obviously it keeps UK PLC moving. The right resources to respond. How many times we've turned up to a site and we end up with the wrong resources or we've got to get to back to the depot. So getting the right resources is the best efficient way to deal with it by using the drone. A quicker decision making process for senior commanders. The senior commanders will not make a decision without some seeing visibility of the site, either attending the site or ability to see the site from, from a distance. And I think the drone gives you the answers fairly quickly. First step to the potential use of wider drones, and that's where the instant response is mostly the easiest bit we can concentrate on before stepping into the sensor applications and surveys. However, and it's a big however, the next steps. Before you get past that point of flying beyond visual line of sight, you need an operational safety case to be written by yourselves, organizations, and get that signed off by CEA. If you don't have that, you're not going to fly. A systems template, so what are you going to use? What type of drone? What sensor payload? What type of platform are you going to use? What type of engines? And what's your dura duration of time of flying? Is it a short duration, long duration? All that capability needs to be put on paper before you actually get in the process of handing it over. And more importantly, your risk assessment. So what's your risk assessment? Say if the drone falls out the sky, what's your landing position? Where are you going to end up? What happens if there's an incident? with your drone, what are you going to do? So building your safe, your safe risk assessment for that. But more importantly as well is then the command and control of the drone. What navigational processes are you going to use in terms of a layered approach? If, if you lose lost link, if you lose comms, how is the drone going to let, operate? Is it going to return to base? Is it going to land on the nearest postage stamp? Or is it going to land back at the highway traffic officer's vehicle or to the emergency services? All those things to be considered when you develop your concept of operations and a safety case. So, vision for the future. I've mentioned hybrid drone, but actually hybrid drone is a wrong word. The hybrid drone is something that works in water, works in sea, works on land, works in the air. And I think that's the future of where we see drones operating. A three-in-one drone, so it can be a car, it can be a plane or an aerial vehicle, but it could be a, a subsurface vehicle as well underwater. If you imagine some of the bridge structures we've got across the UK, 
we can't manage to do the, the under, under, underwater inspections. Why can't we get a hybrid drone in the future to do that? And I think that might be the way forward as well as the air taxis as we'll see going forward. And that's my speech for today. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Quick, short speech, but uh, end of the day. Thank you very much.